your Miami Dolphins win their fifth straight game and move up to 8-3 and three on the season. Final score was 30-15, to 15, and it wasn't the most comfortable win against the team that has the worst record in the league, but a win is a win at the end of the day. To get these stats out of the way, um, Tua Tungvaluwa, 22 for 36. I think that those 14 incompletions have got to be a career high. Um, 299 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions, and a 96.9 passer rating. Skylar Thompson, one for five, six yards. Mm. Uh, Jeff Wilson, 13 for 39, one touchdown. He didn't have the game that many people thought he would, especially with Raheem Moster being out. Um, receiving Jalen Waddle, 5 for 85. Tyree Kill, 6 for 85. Craig Kraft, 4 for 55. Shearfield, 2 for 33. Cedric Wilson, 2 for 26. Um, Durham Smythe had one touchdown. It wasn't the prettiest game. I will say that the Dolphins kind of pulled what the Dolphins usually do. Um, they were up 30 nothing at halftime. Very comfortable lead, obviously. But Tua took a very awkward sack to end the first half. He was able to get up and spike the ball, and Sanders made a field goal to end the half, which was great to see. He had a pretty nice game, um, so you'd love to see that, of course. But at that point, everybody in the stadium skipped a heartbeat. Everybody in the organization was just like, get him out of there. Do not let him get hurt up 30 nothing against the Texans. Um, so he was taken out of the game with 10 minutes left in the third quarter, and that is obviously something that the Dolphins are never going to do, because that was, the second half was atrocious, not a single point scored, let up multiple annoying drives, because obviously the Texans had some sort of confidence boost what, once they realized that Tua was out of the game, um, but obviously that that's something that we'll never do again, is taking Tua out of the game, unless we're up by 50, um, but... The O-line collapsed when Teron Armstead left the game, which was awful because, you know, with signing him, you're always going to know on the side with Teron Armstead that you, you're you signing him with the con of a big chance that he gets injured, and that is, that, that's exactly what happened today. Um, He did miss the... He missed the Lions game or the Bears game, maybe? I don't know. I think he missed one game this season. I might be wrong, though. Um, but we got the best possible news that it's it, it is, it's only a pec strain, which you love to see. Um, he's going to miss some time, which to me is going to look like one week. Um, so that's the 49ers game, and that really sucks. Because right when he came out of the game, the Texans got the two with three consecutive plays in a row. Tua got sacked three times in a row. You rarely see him get sacked, and this time it was against the Texans, the worst team in the league, three times in a row. Um, so against like Nick Boza and that 49ers defense, you can imagine what's going to happen. Um, it really sucks because uh, this is a huge game. If the Dolphins can win this game, you know how great of a position that that would put us in. Um, nine and three, six wins in a row. Then you go to Los Angeles to face the Chargers who are coming off, or at least this week, they're coming off a pretty nice win. Going for two really paid off. Um, but Still, it's really going to suck with the injuries going into next week at, at the Niners. I think we're three and a half point underdogs just to start out. Um, but obviously, that spread is going to be going much more in the 49ers' favor once all of these injuries really come into play. Um, I'm trying to think of any other injuries. Toronto, uh, Austin Jackson left with an ankle injury. He started today's game, which was surprising considering that Brandon Shell, in all of his starts, has not let up a single sack. So that really surprised me uh, that. Austin Jackson took his place. Um, he led up multiple sacks, so I would not be surprised if they went back to Brandon Shell, um, which does make sense. But Brandon Shell was the guy that put that when that left tackle when Armstead went out. So I don't know what the plan is going to be. I think in the end they'd have to go back to Greg Little and Brandon Shell as the both as the two offensive lines. Um, obviously, left guard would stay as Robert Jones, Connor Williams in the middle, and then uh, uh, um, Robert Hunt as right guard. Um, but I'm, I'm scared for that game. I'm really scared for that game. I was already with Armstead. Now without him, I'm even more nervous. McDaniel's going to have to put on a show. And obviously a, the one team you're going to have trouble game planning against is the team you came from. So it's going to be a really tough game for the, against the 49ers. But going back to what this video is actually about, I want to give major credit to the defense. They they played really well, um, at least in the first half. Again, it's, it's the Texans. So I, I don't want to get too much off of this because... You have to go against Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk and, and George Kittle next week. So it's going to be pretty tough. 
Um, but Jalen Phillips, Bradley Chubb, and Melvin Ingram combined for 12 QB pressures, 7 QB hits, and 2 sacks today. Um, obviously, Bradley Chubb is transforming this defense. That trio is going to be what brings us home. The pass rush was there today. It was great to see. Um, Kyle Allen was rolling out on like nearly every single play. I want to say like 65, 70% of his snaps dropping back. He was rolling out at some point. Um, and it was almost always Jalen Phillips coming up there and obviously the one chasing him around the field, which is great to see. He's really transforming. Um, and it, obviously the injuries have not been a part when he was drafted. The major thing was the injuries. That was the reason he was the 18th overall pick without injuries. He could have been the sixth overall pick, but luckily we were able to still get Jalen Waddle at that point. Um, so Jalen Phillips is really making his presence known and injury injuries obviously aren't even a concern for him so far I'm crossing my fingers. Um, but I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a full video within the next couple days um, about this next tough stretch, how it's really going to de determine the Dolphin season. Um, eight and three is obviously the record right now. Just to say it one more time, that the 49ers next week, after that the Chargers and then the Bills, all three of those games are away. Um, you come back home for the Packers, then you go back up the Foxborough for the Patriots game, come back down, play the Jets at home for the season finale. That game is going to be a win no matter what. I think we can win the Patriots game. Packers, I think we can win. Bills is going to be really tough up in Buffalo. Um, Chargers, I think we can win that game too. And there, there's not a game that we can't win. The Dolphins prove that they can beat any team. We beat the Bills at home. Um, we came back from 21 down to the Ravens, two through six touchdowns in that game. That was absurd. Um, there's not a team in the league that we can't beat other than maybe the Chiefs, but obviously we won't have to worry about them until like the AFC, um, AFC championship, which I think will happen. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this team. Um, I haven't been excited about this team in a while and I've, I've been a Dolphins fan my whole life and I know I'm still young. I haven't gone back to like the nineties, obviously, but I've been watching the Dolphins for maybe seven, eight years. And obviously most of those years have been rebuilding. Um, but I'm glad to see this team finally contending. You have all the pieces you need, but obviously next week is going to be tough without your top offensive lineman. But I think McDaniel can get it done. I think Tua can get it done. I think the receiving core can get it done. And for the O-line, it's next man up. We've gone through this. We have three backups playing right now. You've Robert Jones, you've Brandon Shell, you've Greg Little, who played part of the last season. Um, the, like, the, there's nothing that this team hasn't been through. You've multiple backup cornerbacks that are starting. Um, but yeah, and we should have Raheem Moster back next week for his homecoming game in San Francisco. I'm ready for that game. Sure, I'm nervous, but obviously I'm, I was nervous for this game too, to be honest. But um, yeah, the Dolphins get the win once again. I, for, I, I didn't even talk about two of this game. He had a pretty great game. He only played one half, um, but you know, it, it's like we're not even surprised about the about the performances that he puts up any ga every game anymore. Um, but it's, he's going to have to step up for this Niners game. It's going to be a huge one traveling all the way up there. Uh, but either way, that'll wrap up. Your Miami Dolphins move up to 8-3 and three on the season. Next up is San Francisco. We'll see you in the preview of that game. But that'll wrap up. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day. Peace.